As you might know, Adobe recently released an update allowing you to import 3D models into After Effects. But how good is it really? And can it compete with professional 3D software? Today we're putting it to the test, comparing it with Blender using Cycle's render engine. We start with an easy shot and work our way up all the way to a difficult one. And the best part? You get to guess which render is from which software before I reveal it. So without any further ado, let's dive right in. I've prepared four shots for you. Let me know how many you got correct in the comments down below. Before we start though, I want to clarify that After Effects is a compositing software. Normally you would render in a 3D software like Blender and then do the compositing in After Effects. So both software usually work hand in hand. However, with Adobe's new features, we might not need 3D software anymore. So let's take a look at the first shot. All right, which one is which? Take a look at them side by side. Okay, so the first shot was rendered in Blender and the second one was rendered in After Effects. If you're an active viewer on this channel, you might have seen the shot already because I did a tutorial on how you can add this rock in After Effects. So if you're interested, check it out. I will link it to you at the end. The difference is actually a lot bigger than I thought, especially if we compare it with some other tests that I've done for later in the video which are actually a lot more difficult. So let's see where that is. If we look at the shadows, they are actually kind of similar in both renders. Blender actually rendered the shadows all by itself. After Effects currently can't do that. So I had to add them in manually with a mask, but as the rock is kind of far away from the ground, this was not really a problem. If we compare both rocks though, we can really see the difference in render quality. That's just because Psychids is a ray traced render engine therefore it calculates the shadows here way better than After Effects, which is not ray traced and uses a rather simple render engine and therefore the shadows doesn't look as good. It's missing some depth, I feel like. It's like one thing which all blends in together and you can't really see what's closer and what's further away, which is way different to the Blender render where you can clearly see everything. If we talk about workflow though, it was a lot more fun to do it in After Effects because it rendered a whole lot faster and I didn't have to switch any programs while working on it and could do everything in one go. So the workflow goes to After Effects, but if we look at the shot as a whole, I have to say that Blender would be the best choice here. So the next shot should be a little bit harder, but still doable for After Effects. So to find such a shot, I went online and found the promo video by Adobe themselves where they presented some 3D models in a studio-like environment. And it looked really good. So that's exactly what I recreated for the second shot. They both look really similar. So take a look at them again, side by side. So the first shot was rendered in After Effects and the second shot was rendered in Blender. This shot really surprised me. Both renders look almost exactly the same and you really have to search for the differences. So if you really want to get a good looking shot out of After Effects, the studio environment really seems like a great option. It's still not perfect though and I noticed three major differences. So let's take a look at them. The first one I noticed is Motion Blur. After Effects currently doesn't support motion blur and you have to add in a pixel motion blur effect. But this of course doesn't look really good. You really notice it when it rotates here. It looks kind of janky and really weird. And that's just very different when we compare it with the Blender render where it looks really clean and pretty much perfect. The second difference is light. If we compare both renders, we can see that the Blender render is lit a lot more evenly it becomes the most obvious if we look at the strawberry. Here in the After Effects render, there are these dark shadows at the edge. And if we look at the Blender render, that's just not the case. Here it's just lit a lot more evenly, like it also would be in real life. And the last difference is depth of field. I could hide it pretty well by adding a camera lens blur effect to everything that's close to the camera and sort of fake it in that way. But if we compare to Blender, it looks a lot cleaner 
as I literally just selected the right object to focus on and Blender just took care of the rest and calculated everything perfectly. But still, I'm very surprised by the end result. So, good job Adobe. If you're an active viewer on this channel, you also know the next shot because I already did a Blender tutorial on how you can do this shot yourself. But I now also recreated the same shot in After Effects. So, let's take a look at it. Take a look at them again, side by side. So the first shot was created in After Effects and the second shot was created with Blender. Now this one is kind of obvious. Blender just looks way better than After Effects. The shadows look way better. The glass material looks so much better. The environment reflects a lot better in the car. Really, there are a lot of differences. Some are okay, some are not. Like, come on Adobe, please let me change the color of my materials. Or let me at least import an animated 3D model, so the driver doesn't look that creepy. Also, if we look at the workflow, it was a lot nicer to do in Blender. Like to animate the car, I could just create a path and the car would follow that path. In After Effects, that's not possible and I had to do some guessing and I couldn't really make it look good. What's positive for After Effects though, is that I was able to create a scene a lot faster in there compared to Blender and also the render times are a lot faster. So it's not just all bad, but overall, I definitely recommend to use Blender for this one. So the final shot is obviously the most difficult one, but I still didn't do something super fancy, which After Effects just can't handle at all, but still a difficult shot which really shows the limitations. So, take a look at them. And here's a side-by-side -side comparison. So, like you probably guessed, the first shot was rendered in Blender and the second shot was rendered in After Effects. This shot really shows the limitations of After Effects, but to be honest, it still looks a lot better than I thought. When I imported the model, it looked horrible and I thought, yeah, this looks exactly as bad as I thought it would. But then I added some lights in the scene and it looked a lot better after that. But still, it's a day and night difference and everything we discussed for the shots before also applies for this one. I tried my best to make it look good. So like I said, I added in a lot of lights and I also split the model apart and made two separate models out of it. So I could import the head and the body only and move each part individually because in the current version of After Effects you just can't use collections and every model just comes in as one thing. So you can't animate it, but if you split it up into two models, you can still do it. And the same goes for the shadow. After Effects just didn't calculate the shadow, so I had to add this one in manually and in general I had to work a lot around After Effects limitations. But to be honest, it's kind of a difficult shot and it probably wasn't Adobe's aim to make shots like this possible, but rather simple shots like you saw in the beginning. And if you consider this, this actually doesn't look too bad. So what are your thoughts on After Effects new 2D workspace? Share your opinions in the comments down below. Personally, I suggest sticking with dedicated 3D software. It not only looks way better, but also offers some essential features like modeling and simulation tools. These tools are crucial if you want to create your own models, for example. However, After Effects 3D Workspace is a nice addition and can be quite useful in specific scenarios, such as studio environments or holograms. So I'm glad they added this feature and hope they're going to continue improving it in the future. So click on the video here to learn how you can use it yourself.